Good morning. Good morning. Can you raise your right hand? Madam Clerk, we'll swear you in. Please swear over testimony. All right, ma'am, good afternoon. Good morning, rather. Can you state your full name and date of birth for the record for me? Okay. We had a hearing this Monday on August the 5. The court had entered a scheduling order and notice of hearings. Ma'am, that was sent to you by way of mail. Did you receive that? I did yesterday. Okay. All right. I know that you had brought up concerns regarding mailing, and I just wanted to go through uh, the, the historics with regards to the mailing. As you may recall, back on June 28th, we had a hearing where I granted Ms. Cushman's motion to withdraw and addressed your forfeiture, alternatively, a waiver to counsel. You were hand-delivered a copy of that order. On May 25, we had a hearing, and an order was entered, and a notice of hearing was set. That order was hand-delivered to you. Thereafter, there was an order setting hearing that was entered on July 29. That letter, or that order rather, was sent to you at P.O. Box 9109, Seminole, Florida, 33775, which is the Orange County Corrections Department mail address for general inmate mail. That was remedied the next day. On July 30th, a certificate of service was entered to the appropriate address. Uh, identifying you, your inmate number, FDC hyphen B4, PO Box 4970, Orlando, Florida, 32802, which is the um, address that you'd placed in your motion and your notice. That certificate of service included the notice of filing of the memorandum from the Orange County Corrections Department, Security Operations, and there was also a certificate of service providing you the Justice Administrative, Administrative Commission's response to motion seeking due process costs. The next mailings was a notice of mailing of documents by your former attorney, Patricia Cashman, which was the transcripts of depositions of detectives Chelsea Copsell and Scott Lowen, which were taken on May 7th, 2024. That was e-filed on, e -filed on August the 1st, 2024, and emailed to you, I'm sorry, mailed to you with address to you, your inmate number, FDC dorm B, P.O. Box 94970, I apologize, P.O. Box 4970, Orlando, Florida. Did you receive those deposition transcripts? Did. Okay. Then the notice of delivery, would you recall when you received those transcripts? All, everything that you are stating was received on Monday. The 5th? Correct. Okay. The next was a notice of delivery of digital copies of documents that was e-filed by your former attorney, Patricia Cashman, on August 1, 2024, which provided the transcripts of depositions of detectives Chelsea Copsell and Scott Lowen taken May 7, 2024, to Billy Lane on August 1st. And that was mailed to you at the same address. Um, we've been addressing P.O. Box 4970 on August 1. Did you receive that notice? I'm sorry, what was sent that for? Notice of delivery of digital copies of documents, which reflected the deposition transcripts of the detectives I just identified to Mr. Lane. To be honest with you, I don't know. It was a lump sum of a, a giant amount of paperwork, and I haven't gone through it yet. Okay. They had me sign about four or five different documents, so. Okay. For receipt. And the last was a certificate of service that was just e-filed on May the 5th which was provided to you as well on May, the, I'm sorry, August the 5th. It was provided to you on August the 5th at the PO box we've identified by way of US mail, which was a copy of the order authorizing the defense to incur costs for private investigator and the scheduling order and notice of hearings entered August 5, 2024. Have you received both of those? I did and I had questions on that please when and, I In just a moment now. So I know that there was a concern with regard to mailing and things purportedly not being timely provided to you. There was only one order, the order of July 29th, which was sent to the general mail delivery. And that was remedied the exact next day on July 30th. So that clerical error as to the wrong address was remedied one day after the original order was sent out on July the 29th. I just wanted to put that on the record and uh, again, identify for you, ma'am, that nothing's being withheld from you and everything is being timely served to you um, as required. Now you had questions about the JAC order. I will revisit those in just a moment. I've got a, a sticky with regard to that. And I was going to say, please, if I may, about the address, there were two or three different documents that were uploaded to the tablet. So those three documents without knowing specifically which ones they are, those were also sent to PO box 9101. I don't know what you're talking about. 
you were talking about supposedly just one document that was mailed to the incorrect address. It was more than one. That's not correct. Court scoured the court file this morning, ma'am. The court has not filed anything other than what I've identified since that June 28th order where you were representing yourself pro se. So that is incorrect. Is it something that I need to record and bring back or is it that big of a deal? Uh, I can't answer that question. That may call for me providing you legal advice. But I can tell you that other than the July 29th order, which was remedied the next day, everything has been sent to the appropriate legal uh, mail address as provided by the Orange County Jail. Um, we've had this hearing today to address a couple of things based on the scheduling order and notice of hearing that was entered August 5. The first was the, uh, the digital evidence issue. Uh, I've been advised, I think through Mr. Lane, who I do see in the courtroom, um, Mr. Lane, if you could come on up, sir, so Madam Clerk can swear you in. A swear or firm the testimony you should give shall be the truth, the whole truth, the truth, the truth, so let me go. All right, Mr. Lane, good morning, sir. Can you state your full name and your affiliation with Prison Break Investigations, please? Billy Lane, Chief Investigator, Owner of Prison Break <laughs> Okay. I understand part of the order uh, from Monday was regarding the state's digital evidence. Um, I understand that may have been provided on a USB drive to you, Mr. Lane. We want to hear from the state with regard to that first. So either Mr. J or Mr. Castori. Yes, Your Honor. We have uh, tendered to Mr. Lane a copy of our uh, the exhibit list uh, with our uh, expected items of evidence that will be received along with uh, expected witnesses uh, to be called at the trial. Uh, a copy of that was provided on the USB with the exhibits, the witness list, um, also proposed uh, jury instructions and a stipulation as to victim ID for her uh, review as well. Okay, and when was that provided to Mr. Lane? Uh, just now. Okay, all right. Um, the witness and exhibit list that is um, Included on that USB, do you have hard copies? I do, Your Honor. I would like to file them in open court. That was going to be my next question. Okay. And I have a copy for defense. Okay, very good. Um, Debbie Bruce, if we can get the copy of the witness list and the exhibits uh, and take that from Mr. Lane and provide it to Ms. Boone. And, you, yes. and Your Honor, uh, the state's position is that. Given that our exhibit list contains within it a witness list as well, we would ask that that uh, document be sealed uh, the way the witness lists are routinely sealed. Uh, a copy of that request to seal is uh, there with the, the notice of the witness list uh, on the, uh, the initial page before the, uh, our notice of the exhibit list. What I have in front of me is the notice of provision of witness list and then the notice of expected evidence and witnesses of trial. I don't have an order or. It's, it's, it wouldn't be an order. It would just be that, that first document you read, okay. reference the notice of provision of witness list. Got it. Okay, thank you. All right. Anything else with regard to the expected evidence and digital evidence? No. Okay, so just for my own understanding there are nine files on the usb drive that are digital in nature is that correct uh, yes. okay all right and those are all on the usb drive that is going to be provided to miss boone yes they're, they're broken down by folders and the folders are the <laughs> names of the folders do they match the names in the digital evidence list uh but they, they roughly match. Uh, I believe that uh, on there, there may be some slight uh, change of terminology uh, from, I believe, uh, files found on iPhone as opposed to suitcase, uh, videos, and still shot. Okay, all right. State anything else to add with regard to the digital evidence? Uh, no, I also have a copy of the thumb drive as well that Mr. Lane has had an opportunity to copy for his client that I can tender uh, to, again, we tend to Mr. Lane to tender to his client. Is that different that we've already given him? 
he had an opportunity to copy it, but this would be uh, yeah. their copy to retain. Okay, all right. So you can go ahead and provide that. Do you want to mark that as an exhibit for the purposes of the hearing? I guess not, since it's going to be transferred to directly to Mr. Lane. Correct. Okay, all right. You can go ahead and give that to Mr. Lane. All right. Ma'am, or Mr. Castori, any other questions? Anything else you want to bring to my attention with regard to the digital evidence? No, no. Okay. Ma'am, have you had the opportunity to review the um, notice of expected evidence and witnesses at trial document that was just provided to the court and yourself this morning? I did. Okay. Do you have any questions with regard to the digital evidence, which are paragraphs one through nine on the first and second pages of the notice? Um, I don't know what the majority of them are. Um, the, is this part of the evidence that was supplied to me on all of the USB drives that was supplied also? Yes, this is a pared down. Um, all of the items referenced uh, in our notice and provided on the USB have already been previously disclosed and uh, given to defense. Okay. When, Any other questions? Yes. Um, yes. On the USB drives for the laptop, it's not compatible with the USB drives for some of the files. So I cannot open a majority of what are on both of the USB drives. What do you mean you cannot open a majority? What can you not open? I don't know specifically which files. I know that some of them come up as videos. Some of them come up as JPEGs. Some of them come up as different formats. But there's an entire page of multiple icons that come up, and every time I try to open one, it won't let me review it. Okay. So what, I don't. What does know. it say? I don't. I don't know. Um, I moved on from that to try to go to other programs. So I don't know. I figured it would be something that I might be able to speak to Billy about when he came to see me uh, early next week. So, but I'm just stating to the court now that's one of the problems that I'm having with the laptop. But you said it's a majority but you can't identify specifics for me. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. What is it that you're not able to look at? It doesn't identify what they are because of the amount. When I click on a particular file, there's a file inside of a file inside of a file. So when I try to open one of the files, all these different icons come up. So if I try to click on one, it says unavailable. So I keep trying to go to the next one, the next one, and the next one, but they're all the same format. So I can't open any of those. Okay. And how many times has that happened? The one one file, I, 10 files, 20 files, 50 files, or it was just a one time and then you moved on to something else? I don't know how many files were in it because I didn't bother to waste my time on trying to open. I believe I tried to open about eight or nine of them, and then I just moved on from that folder into another folder. And the other items in the other folder, were those accessible? Were those viewable? For the most part, yes. I haven't, I have not had. A I don't know what to, for the most part means. I haven't had time yet to explore everything due to the dorm environment. So as soon as I, in the amount of information, the vast amount of information that he has on there, I'm trying to figure out a way where I can sit in it. I have a letter to you that I wrote to the captain, a copy for you. So you know what I'm trying to work on in order for privacy to be had. So um, I haven't explored both USB drives to the fullest uh potential that I possibly can yet. Just from the moment that I have attempted to do so, the one problem I have had was with the one folder with many icons in it. I attempted to open about eight or nine of them, could not, so I moved on to whatever was next. All right. Hey. The, I could add to that, that everything that we have provided on the, this USB file, uh, we have uh, checked, it's all on standard formats. Uh, for instance, the public surveillance video that's uh, referenced uh, in our notice, uh, we included both the original uh, public's files from there, and then we also had those files converted to VLC because they are easier to play in VLC. So if she clicks on that folder, she can click again on a subfolder, and she will find VLC files uh, for where the public's video has been converted. So everything in there should be standard JPEG, VLC, uh, or and also believe an MP4 or some audio only files. All right. Um, Ma'am, do you have any other questions with regard to the digital information or digital evidence identified in the notice that the state's provided to court and yourself this morning? That was what was just handed to Mr. Lane. 
So, Mr. Lane, you and I would go over that when you and I meet. I will. I will be meeting with you tomorrow. Um, there is a concern that I will not be able to transfer this to this food through the jail protocol. I, I, I would. I have a. I have a remedy for that. Um, with regard to well, let me let me finish with the the digital. Uh, any any other concerns, ma'am, as to the items identified in this notice? Until I'm able to open them and see them, no, I do not. Sure. Okay. State anything else we need to talk about with regard to that issue? Uh, not in regards to that issue. Okay. All right. So, um, Mr. Lane, I'm going to ask that you take possession of that jump drive that was tendered to you in court this morning, and you advise the court that you're going to be meeting with Ms. Boone tomorrow. Is that correct? About approximately what time are you going to be meeting with her? If you know? Okay. All right. Um, I have had the opportunity to have further conversations with Major Muhammad at the jail, including conversations regarding the physical documents. Um, Ma'am, are you are are you still requesting cop, uh, hard copies of the documents? I am. Okay. The jail has advised me that they've had conversations with you related to any other property or legal documents that you may need. Have you ever advised the jail that you have everything that you need and don't need anything else? No, one of the um, sergeants came and spoke to me yesterday, um, miscommunication of some sort where I uh, explained to her what I'm trying to do with purging my property and the property department so I can um, anticipate those discovery hard copies. Was that Tracy Hall? No, that was um, Hall. Her, her last name is Hall. So it was Hall, H-A-L-L, -L, correct? Yes. Okay. But someone sent her to me to see me, so I just don't know who that was. Who was it you communicated with yesterday regarding your personal effects that may have been in a property locker? Miss Hall. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do you know Miss Hall's first name? I don't. I don't know any of the officers. Okay. Are. All right. So in conversations with Major Muhammad, they are going to be, be able to accommodate you having your paper copies. So Mr. Lane, I know that you took custody of those and have had them. So tomorrow when you um, meet Ms. Boone at approximately 9 a.m., you will meet Mr. Muhammad as well. Um, well, let me ask this. Are you able to go to the jail today? Okay, so I, I know for a fact that Major Muhammad is available today and he may be expecting you to arrive today. If you are able to provide to him the banker's boxes that were identified as A and B and that jump drive, and then provide the court with a notice as to when and what time and that to whom you gave it should be Major Muhammad, those items, so we can file it in the court file. And those will then be, the digital evidence will then be provided with the laptop in accordance with the protocol that we've gone over previously. And Major Muhammad will make sure that Ms. Boone has access to the hard copies. So after conferring, well, let me ask this. State, do you have any other position with regard to the motion that was set to be heard today, the um, defendant's motion regarding seeking her hard copies? No, you're not. Okay. So for the record, then, that motion will be granted. The motion for defendant to lawfully receive, review, utilize the original hard copy discovery, two boxes A and B, submitted to the court by former attorneys on June 28, 2024, for preparation of trial in her criminal case. As ordered, Mr. Lane will deliver those to the jail today and seek to have them delivered to uh, Malik, Major Malik Muhammad, along with the digital, um, the USB drive with the digital evidence. Mr. Lane, the deposition transcripts of detectives Chelsea Copsell and Scott Lowen were um, purportedly sent to you on August 1st. Did you receive those from Ms. Cashman? Yes. Okay, were they a part of the um, two USB drives that we addressed on August 5th? You had the smaller one, which was everything you digitized from the two boxes, and then you had the larger one of other materials that you had been given previously. No, but I do have a drive that I can put them on and make sure they get to the jail. Today. Okay, if you could make sure, sir, that when you drop off the other two things, digital copies, I know Ms. Boone has identified that she has physical copies, but I'd like to give her digital copies just in case. Um, State, do you have any questions with regard to the court's directive to Mr. Lane regarding the hard copies 
depositions of the detectives or the um, digital evidence the state may seek to admit in trial. No, Your Honor. All right. Ma'am, do you have any questions for Mr. Lane regarding those three items? No. Okay. Can Mr. Lane be released? Uh, yes. Okay. If you want to head up, can he be released, ma'am? Um, I guess I'll see you at nine. Okay. Sir, if you could endeavor to do that today, I would greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right. The next matter this morning is the defendant's motion for defendant's reasonable freedom and movement by allowing her to be unshackled, unhandcuffed, to function equally and comfortably while utilizing the courtroom that was hand filed with the court on August 5, 2024. Courts have the opportunity to review that motion um, and the law regarding restraints. Um, State, do you have any positions at this time with regard to the defense's motion? Your Honor, uh, in speaking with uh, courtroom security, we would oppose the motion. And we have uh, Corporal uh, Gavin Lowton available to uh, supplement uh, this court's uh, knowledge on the issue. Okay. So ma'am, we're going to have a hearing on your motion. The state will call the corporal. He will uh, be inquired by the state as to some concerns that they may have. And you'll be given the opportunity to ask him questions or cross-examine him after the state's concluded asking any questions. Do you have any questions about that process? Is that today? That will be happening right now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you have any questions about that process? I don't. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and call your witness. State. State will call Gavin Lowson. Sir, good morning. Can you state and spell your name for the record for me? Uh, Gavin Alton, G A P I N L O W T A. All right. Thank you. State, you may proceed. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And what is it that you do for a living? Uh, I work for the Orange County Sheriff's Office as a uh, deputy sheriff. And to what area of the Sheriff's Office are you assigned? Uh, court security. And how long have you uh, worked that assignment? Uh, four or five years now. And tell us, what are some of your duties within that assignment? I supervise the uh, the deputies in two felony courtrooms and one civil courtroom. And are you familiar with the defendant in this particular case? Uh, just through research that I've done on her, I don't have any personal knowledge of the defendant. And what, in, in regards to that uh, research into the defendant, uh, what is your position uh, as the head of security? regarding her uh, request to be free from shackles. I do not believe she should be free from shackles. And why is it that you have come to that conclusion? Um, based on her current charge of second degree, uh, second degree murder, uh, she also has a previous uh, domestic arrest for battery by strangulation. She has three separate incidents at the jail for non-compliance where she was told to attend her court hearings, or scheduled court hearings, and she refused to do so. And then even when the corrections officers told her she could be charged with contempt of court, she still refused to attend those hearings. Uh, those kind of, uh, when you combine all that, to me it shows a propensity for violence and not wanting to follow uh, lawful commands and orders of law enforcement personnel. Um, what um, what accommodations uh, can be made in order to um, keep concealed uh, the fact that she is uh, shackled or restrained during trial? So when the defendant is here, she would just be in leg restraints. She wouldn't have the belly chains. She wouldn't have handcuffs on. We modif we modified the leg restraints by wrapping tape around the chains. So even if she's to make motion. Her movement, it wouldn't make noise to the jury as to that she's got restraints on. Um, she would be brought in and sat at the uh, defense table prior to the jury coming in and being seated so they wouldn't see her walk in with restraints on. 
and there's a panel in front of the uh, defense table that prevents the jury from seeing that she's got uh, leg restraints on. Your Honor, I don't believe I have any uh, further questions at this time. Thank you. Ma'am, do you have any questions for Officer Logan? I do. Go ahead. First off, um, in your in quotes research that you've done on me, the um, domestic violence case that I was charged with, the felony with strangulation, was dropped. I don't know if you were aware of that in your research. Yes, so I was never charged with that. Um, also, what three hearings is it that I supposedly missed on what dates? I'll have to, I have those here. I've never missed a court date. In the almost five years that I've been here, I've never, I've never argued, I've never hesitated. Did object to the form of the question, Your Honor? I'm going to sustain the objection. Ma'am, you have to ask one fact per question. Okay. I am prepared to uh, give her the dates. Okay. On September 15, 2023, uh, that was one of the times you refused to attend. October 16, 2023, and January 28, 2021. And do you know what those were specifically for? Uh, for court attendance, wherever you were scheduled for that day. For a hearing or pretrial or withdrawal? I don't know. It was just, this is just information from the jail where the corrections officer said you refused to attend your hearings. So is that on record that I have supposedly refused these three dates to appear in At court? The jail, yes. Who is your contact, please? I've never missed a date. This is a database that I got this information from. Do you know when it was last updated? It's, I do not. Okay, so do you know how I have never missed a court date to the present date? I don't know specifically what these three dates are for um, in order for me to have supposedly uh, denied going. Do you know the name of the officers for each one? You do? Yes. Please. For the September 15, 2023, it is uh, Corrections Officer Portia Hines. Could you spell her last name, please? H-I-N-E-S. And you said the date was 9-15-23? Correct. Okay. If you would like, I can read her comments in her report. Sure. Approximately midnight, I informed inmate Boone, Sarah, that she was scheduled to appear in the court today. Inmate Boone uh, stated she did not want to attend court. I advised her that her absence could result in being held in contempt of court. Inmate Boone stated she understood and continued in her decision to refuse. Corporal L. Cameron was notified. This report is being generated for informational purposes. But it doesn't say what it was that I supposedly refused. To attend for it. It doesn't say specifically what you're hearing is for. Okay. Second one, uh, it'll be Officer Christy Green. And what is this date for? I'm sorry, what's okay. that? Which date is it that you're referencing? That's going to be October 16, 2023. Okay, and I'm sorry, the name? Green, G R E E N E. And what was the first initial, please? K. G R E E N E. Yes. 10, 16, 23. Yes. Okay. And the third one is January 28, 2021. And the officer is Jasmine Scribner. S-C-R-I-B-N-E-R. What are the comments, please, for uh, Green? At approximately 300 hours, I advised inmate Boone, Sarah, that she was on schedule to attend downtown court. Inmate Boone stated she did not want to attend court. I informed inmate Boone that if she fails to attend, she could be held in contempt of court. Inmate Boone acknowledged she understood and continued with the decision to refuse to attend court. A formal ward in the Booking and Release Center, a uh, transport officer was notified. All proper not notations were made in the IMS. Okay. And January 28th? Approximately 0334 hours, inmate Boone, Sarah, was advised she has downtown court and to start getting ready. 
inmate Boone stated she did not want to attend court. I informed inmate Boone that she could be charged with contempt of court. Inmate Boone still refused to attend court. Corporal Hall and the Booking and Release Center Transportation Officer were notified of this incident. This report is being generated for informational purposes only. And all of those comments were made on the day of that I supposedly refused. I don't know when they entered that. It doesn't state in their IMS, in their it, program? It probably it might, but I didn't take that information out. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out how it, I know all three corporals and the, the sergeant. So I've never refused court. I don't, there is no reason for me to want to refuse court. I'm going to object as to ask and answer. I'm going to sustain the objection. So the domestic violence, the original was dropped. I was never charged with that. Object as to relevance, Your Honor. Overruled. You can ask the question, sir. Okay. Um, it was dropped. You were charged and arrested. I don't know why the state dropped it. It could be because both parties, based on the report that I read, did not want to cooperate, so they probably didn't have information to go forward um, with the charges. That does not mean that you didn't commit the act, it just meant the state felt that they didn't have a case that they could win. What is your definition of probably did not cooperate? Was it a fact or you're just guessing? It's a, you're on going to object to the question. Check and sustain. Both of the charges were dropped for him, Mr. Torres and for myself was because we did cooperate and there was not enough information. And we received documentation in the mail, both of us, for the reasons why it was dropped. Your Honor, I'm going to object this to the form of the question. It's not a question, it's a sustain. Forgive me, because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm trying to provide my information for what it is that I'm being accused of. I don't know if I'm doing it the wrong way, apparently. So I don't know how I'm, I don't know the protocol for this. I'm just trying to answer my accusations. I understand your position. I cannot tell you what to do. I cannot provide you any legal advice. Okay, I'm just stating to the court that I'm doing my best with uh, being uneducated in this situation. Um, that is my, do I, for the non-compliance, I need to speak to the corporals and the sergeant in order for that to be remedied. And then what about, do you need the documentation for the uh, domestic charge that I was not charged with and it was dropped cooperatively? I do, I do know that the charges were dropped. I'm just saying that is in your history. I understand, but I was never charged with it, correct? You were charged with it. It was dropped. The charges were dropped. But it is not on my record. The arrest is on your record. But the charge for the domestic violence is not on my record. No, you were never convicted. Just to ask and answer, Robert. Overruled. You were never convicted of the domestic battery charge, but you were charged with it. And, and the case was dropped? Yes. For the uh, three um, supposed noncompliance that I have, I know that two of the officers are no longer with the Department of Corrections. So, uh, <coughs> Orange County Corrections Department. So I will need to speak to their uh, supervisors in order for me to have, uh, I guess, this remedy. Is it a- Your Honor, I'm gonna to object to the form of the question. This is a, a statement a question. Objection sustained. I guess I will provide information to you for uh, the non-compliance occurrences that I'm being charged with. Your Honor, again, I'm going to object as to that's not a question, it's a statement. The objection is sustained. I know this is a lame question, but what does sustained mean? That means the state's legal basis for you asking that question is correct, and the court will not permit you to ask that question. Thank you. In the way that it may be asked. 
what do I need to provide to you in order to have that remedied in order for me to be unhandcuffed? Uh, Your Honor, again, I'm going to object as to the, the form of the question. Overruled. Whatever documentation, but I believe that the decision as to whether or not you'll be in restraints will be made today. I understand, but it can be made. What's that? Um, the decision in order to be um, unhandcuffed. Correct. I, I, I suppose if you have documentation to say that this was all fabricated, then I wouldn't be able to use this. Correct. As you telling me about the uh, domestic violence. That cannot be used against me either. It is still part of your history. I can bring it up. Right. But just to clarify and conclude, I was not ever charged with that. Again, I'm going to object this and ask it as a sustain. Okay. Um, I will. Do I provide this information to you? You can provide it to the state. Um, am I, in your opinion, um, a flight risk or um, detrimental to the courtroom and am a uh, threat of any type of harm? Based on what I've researched, I don't know you personally, but based on my research, I don't think it would be appropriate for you to not be in restraint. And then what was the year, please, for the um, charge that was dropped with the domestic violence? It was 2018. 2018? Correct. And it is now 2024. Okay. And you're going solely off of uh, what the arrest affidavit? What is it that you're using to conclude due to this occurrence that was dropped that I would not be able to be uh, unrestrained? Correct. Your, your arrest history, the information I read, um, all the research that I've done, that's where I'm basing my conclusion on. But what specifically from that 2018 charge? The fact that you were charged with battery bias regulation, which is a violent act, is one of the reasons why I've said that I do not believe it's appropriate for you not to be in restraints. But it was never proven, correct, because it was dropped? It was dropped. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Okay. I'll be working on the others with the corporals and the sergeant for the supposed non-compliance. Thank you for the dates and the information. You're welcome. Do you have any other questions? Do I need to supply anything for the 2018 domestic violence occurrence that you are referencing and applying? All the, it's already been dropped. I'm just telling you what the history is. So, and you you're, and you can still apply it even though it's not been correct. It's in your history. Okay, thank you for the information. You're Any follow up, Steve? No, you're on the time. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anything else, Steve? Not from the state. Okay. Um, I see Deputy Barnett here. Did you come up, sir? A square or farm fish is someone you should give Shelby the truth, the whole truth, and not the truth, so help you God. Yes, I do. Sir, good afternoon, or good morning, rather. Can you state your full name and date of birth for the record for me? And not your date of birth. Sorry, could you spell your uh, spell your name for the record? D-B-A-R-N-E-T-T. -E and what are your duties and responsibilities here at the Orange County Courthouse? I'm the deputy sheriff at the Orange County Courthouse. I work in courtrooms. I supervise squads, and I'm also in charge of uh, training inside the courthouse. Okay. Is there any training that's addressed with regard to other security measures other than shackles that may be provided for defendants? Yes, we have an item called the stun cuff that is also used in the court. Okay, could you step us through what a stun cuff is? A stun cuff is a electronic device that's wireless. It's, um, it's boxed, secured to the leg, 
It has uh, 50,000 volts and it's able to be remotely sparked from a distance. How is it fixed or placed on a person? It's dual strapped along the cap on uh, either way. It can be hit in the hands. And these are the only people who want that. And who is in charge of operating um, that device? It'll be an assigned officer that's been trained. And step us through the operation of how that device is utilized or operated by that officer. The officer will uh, show the device to the subject or the inmate or the defendant. It will be secured with two straps on the leg. Uh, there is a waiver to be set signed prior to being used, explaining when it would be used if, if it was needed to be used during court, violence, attempt to escape, uh, any actions that lead to that level of. Uh, to use the device. Um, it's a two-step process, so there is no way for an accident to be set off. It has to be hit two separate buttons for so no accidents. If it had to be used, it would cause a shock to the location on the path, causing a great amount of pain, causing the defendant most likely to fall to the ground, and we can secure it and take care of the situation after that. Are there any other protocols or standard operating procedures regarding the use of the stun belt? Other than what you've already identified, just to follow up with uh, uh, response to resistance, response to resistance policy. Yeah. Okay, and can you explain the response response to resistance policy? We have a level of response to resistance depending on what an individual does to what we would do. So if she was attempt to escape or fight, we would use it to match that level of resistance. What is the level of resistance whereby which the um, stun belt would be deployed or utilized? At this moment, it's at a level three. And what is a level three? Level three would be failing to follow the direction and stuff like that. If we have to get up and move or not, or follow the lawful order, we could use it. Um, most likely in the courtroom, we would use it probably at a level four level. That is pretty much fighting, escaping, attacking the other person. Okay. All right. State, do you have any questions to uh, Deputy Barnett? No, sure. Right. Ma'am, do you have any questions for Deputy Barnett? I do, please. Go ahead. Um, tell me, what is the title of this? Stuck. Cuff. Cuff. And you said this was applied on the calf or the ankle? Yeah, the killing tendon area. And is this something that it does it need uh, extensive preparation or is it something that can just be put on coming and going from the courtroom? We would place it on you before the court starts. You can take it on that court every time you exit the court. It takes a few moments besides signing, signing the waiver and securing it. And it's a one time waiver? Uh, Each day you'll have to sign the waiver. Okay. And okay, so there's no limit to how many times it can be put on and taken off, put on, taken it off? No. And it's a very simple, very, uh, simple uh, process to apply? Yes. And remove? Yes. Thank you. Any follow up? No, thank you. Why? Sorry. Sorry. Um, would I have my hands free, correct? Yes, you would have your hands free either way. If you were in a leg iron, your hands would be completely free. It's not the same thing. And then my hand, and I would be able to walk? You would be able to walk with the stun cuff free. Yes. So hands free and able to walk? Yes. Thank you. Any other follow up? State? No, you're not. All right. Um, can Mr. Barnett or Sergeant Barnett be re released? Yes. Ma'am, can he be released? Yes, thank you. Right. Thank you, sir. State any argument, any further witnesses, evidence, or testimony with regard to the defendant's shackle motion. Uh, no, no. Ma'am, do you have any other things that you would like to tell the court with regard to your motion? I don't understand what um, Sergeant Burnett was. Was that you all providing me an option? There is Florida Supreme Court case law addressing reasonable measures for movement by a defendant in the courtroom. So that is an option? Yes. Okay. Do I need to supply the information in regards to the, the supposed three non-compliance before that can actually be um, made an actual option? I cannot answer that question because that would be me providing you legal advice as to what you could, can, or should do. I cannot do that. Would I be able to be unrestrained with that information? 
I think that would come down to the argument of yourself and from the state as to what the local court has to consider with regard to your requests and your motion and what the law is in the state of Florida. If I may make it clear also, I'm simply just asking to be unhandcuffed so I can write and move properly. I'm not trying to move maneuver the courtroom and so on and so forth. I simply just am asking to sit here being unhandcuffed so I can write without taking skin off of my wrist and being extremely uncomfortable. Okay, ma'am, thank you for that clarification. Because when I read your motion, you asked to be unshackled, to have freedom of movement. And I interpreted that as you wanted to move as everybody else may be able to move in this courtroom as Mr. Katchatory has moved around, how other persons have moved around. And it wasn't only limited to your hands. I thought it meant to your entire person based on what it is that you were seeking in your motion. So just for the purposes of my own clarification, is your motion only seeking to have your hands not bound so that you can move your hands, but otherwise shackles that may be on your legs would continue to stay there? Right. I don't currently have shackles, but I don't know what is in regards to trial procedure. And in regards for you not having the clarification of me just wanting to be unhandcuffed, is it my responsibility, or I don't know if you can answer this, but... You don't ask questions, which is what got me in this predicament from the get-go of having no counsel because no questions were ever asked to me just for the majority of my motions and letters and so on that I have um, supplied the court for more information to try to intervene and help. It's just gotten me into hotter water and no counsel and still restrained. So is it something that I need to specifically clarify going forward or is it something that you're you have the ability to ask me questions so you have a better understanding. Generally, I don't know that I can answer that question because it may call for me providing legal advice. If I'm asking questions, it's because I'm trying to clarify things from my understanding. I cannot ask questions on your behalf. I cannot ask questions for you. I cannot assist you in any process, be it this hearing or at trial. Right. Um, yes. I understand. I wasn't asking for assistance. I was just understanding, trying to understand by you not asking questions in regards to my motion about being unhandcuffed and unshackled simply meant just my handcuffs. Ma'am, I, I review your motion to be unshackled, unhandcuffed, and allow reasonable freedom to move to movement and functioning accordingly, equally, and comfortably while utilized in the courtroom. All normal movement of the defendant's hands is as a whole freely, properly, successfully accomplish any task that is needed. Asking to be unshackled and in handcuffed, the defendant is simply requesting equal, comfortable, functional movement to achieve advancement in her forfeited right to counsel by the court, which will greatly enhance the productivity and progress for the defendant and the completion of her defense in her criminal case in preparation for trial. Your wherefore clause specifically asks to be unshackled, unhandcuffed, and allowed reasonably free in movement to function equally, accordingly, and comfortably in the courtroom. I took that as you wanted to move around. You did not want to be shackled, which would be your legs as well. And you did not want to have handcuffs. If you're telling me now that all you're asking is your hands to be free, that's respectfully not what your motion says over and over and over again, as I've just read. So if you would like to clarify me for me now at this time, you can as to what it is that you're asking them. Yes. Handcuffed. I would like to have these handcuffs removed from my wrists. Okay. Um, in regards to the unshackled, I know at some point I would have to maneuver, I'm guessing, um, in the courtroom for trial. So I didn't want to have to wait last moment to have to do another motion to be unshackled if that's what my option is, because I don't know. So I was just trying to be transparent prior so you would know what it was that I was hopefully expecting. But first, Go ahead. it's just handcuffs mean unhandcuffed. And if for trial I have to be shackled to be unshackled. Okay. And when you say unshackled, what do you mean by that? just so that we're all on the same field. Shackled, as far as my understanding is from being shackled, means that I have this along with my waist, along with my ankles. So unhandcuffed is simply for the hands and the wrists, and then unshackled would be for my ankles and for the feet. And is that what you were seeking for trial purposes? 
I didn't know if I was going to be shackled or not. So that, again, that was why I was trying to be transparent and up forward by doing so now to make the court aware that that would be a request of mine at the time. Okay. All right. So you would be seeking to, to be unshackled, no leg restraints, no arm restraints at trial, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Would you also be asking of the court to move around the courtroom when trial would take place? I'm not sure if this can, is considered legal advice, but I don't know. Um, I know from seeing other trials, um, the state and the defense, they maneuver the courtroom in front of the jury, so on and so forth, and they hand things back and forth. Um, I would have to have other movement other than me sitting here. So yes, I would have very limited uh, reasonable movement in the courtroom for trial. Okay. Yes. Is there anything else, ma'am, that you would like to tell me with regard to what you were seeking in your motion to be uh, hands free, for lack of a better word, during any hearings that we may have, and then to be hands free, unshackled with your legs, and to have movement in the courtroom during the course of the trial? Is there anything else that you'd like to tell me about those requests? Um, I don't know if you've been able to see my difficulty with just simply trying to take notes. Yes, very much. I would like to be unhandcuffed um, just to sit here and uh, be in attendance of my hearings, conferences, com whatever it is. Um, for the trial, when the time comes for any limited movement that I would have, um, the stun cuff, I am... I. I would sign the waiver now, just whatever it is that I can do in order to enable myself to be able to have the same comfortable atmosphere and movement and um, equal opportunities just as everyone else. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to tell me? Ma no, Your Honor. Okay. State, any argument? Your Honor, you've heard the Sheriff's Office's position. They're in charge of courtroom security. They've presented basically their position that she should not be unshackled, but you've also heard from Deputy Barnett who explained the options that are available to the court. Um, our position is if you do not um, allow her freedom of movement with the stun cuff, then today is probably the best day to start talking about the logistics of how we're going to do this trial so it does not create the inference that she is an inmate. Does that mean the state will be sitting at a council table to question witnesses? How are we going to go about getting back and forth uh, to the clerk and to the witness to present exhibits? If she is not going to be able to do the same with shackles. So that's, we just want to bring everything to the court's attention so we can get it all settled today. I agree, which was the purpose of why we wanted to set it for today to, uh, to address all those circumstances and again, think ahead. Um, Ma'am, do you have any closing remarks or arguments that you'd like to make to the court about your um, desires to be unhandcuffed, unshackled, and or utilize the, uh, the stunt cuff? I believe that it is unfair that you, number one, want me to represent myself, and then number two, you would like for me to represent myself while being handcuffed to be able to progressively and actively participate properly and the same as others with just simply being able to write notes. Um, at some point, I'm sure I will be bringing things with me to court that I need to reach for, to open, to pass normal functions in a body as a whole um, with the same equal level as anyone in the courtroom would have in order for myself to be able to do the same and function fairly and appropriately. Uh, I don't know if this is legal advice or not, but in a trial, are you able to tell me, are, um, are defendants shackled? Or is this something that I don't even need to worry about because they're not even shackled? Typically, ma'am, uh, the defendants have leg shackles that as uh, deputy already identified, deputy Lowen, Lowton identified, they're wrapped so that they're muffled so that they don't uh, jingle jangle or bring any noise attention and the privacy panels located in front of defense counsel's table would prohibit the jury from seeing those. Um, their hands are free, uh, but um, the legs are in restraints. Thank you. Uh, yes, I very much would like to be unhandcuffed just to simply take notes and function normally and equally um, just for hearings and so on and so forth, which we have a lot scheduled futuristically. And then when trial comes about, either way with trial and or hearings, um, the stun cuff, I am uh, readily awaiting for that to be an option. 
and to apply as soon as possible, whatever it is and however it is that I need to, just to at least just have these removed. Okay, got it. Any closing remarks? Okay. No, I'm just address all the concerns, which is important the court's plan. Got it. All right. Thank you very much. I think the Florida Supreme Court has given us the, the guidance specifically for a case just like this in Weaver versus State, 894 Southern 2nd, 178 by the Florida Supreme Court in 2004. In that case, there was a pro se defendant who was representing themselves who had been charged with first degree murder. And there was no prior history of violent courtroom outbursts. Um, the defendant in that case was representing themselves and um, there was some concerns as to being allowed to move around the courtroom during trial may present some safety hazards. The court identified as there would be, um, in our case, potential sidebars, access to witnesses, evidence, jurors, et cetera. And that uh, in that case, Weaver's pro se status meant that he would be moving about the courtroom in close proximity to the judge, jurors, prosecutors, witnesses, and potential firearm evidence. This closer proximity to various trial participants arguably raises greater safety concerns than the defendant who is represented by counsel and has no legitimate reason to wander beyond the defense table. Given those circumstances in which a defendant is charged with first degree murder was representing himself and moving about the courtroom in close proximity to trial exhibits, especially adverse witnesses, the trial court did not abuse its discretion, even though Weaver had no prior history of violent courtroom behavior. In the Weaver case, the Florida Supreme Court found that the trial court's um, utilization of a stun belt um, was not so prejudicial when measured against the other alternative forms of restraint and whether those alternatives are less prejudicial or viable. There was virtually no alternative to a stun gun given the visibility of other restraints and the security concerns posed by Weaver's pro se status in that case. Uh, it is clear as a matter of Florida law that a criminal defendant's right to be free of physical restraints is not absolute. And that under the circumstances in the Weaver case, the decision to employ a stun belt constitutes a rational exercise of the trial court's discretion that was reasonably necessary to ensure order and safety in the courtroom, especially in light of the defendant's pro se status. In that case, we had a firearm. It was first degree murder. Here we have second degree murder. Um, the incidents identified by um, Officer Lotan as to um, non-compliance in jail for reportedly refusing to return uh, to uh, show up in court and the charge itself. Um, the charge itself has some level of concern because it is a second degree murder, but I, I don't see how where we are right now is not on all fours with Weaver, especially coupled with Ms. Boone's um, acquiescence to utilizing the stun cuff and say she'd sign the waiver today. She doesn't have to. You'll have to sign the waiver when we get to trial. So unless I hear anything alternatively from the state, the courts would grant the motion that she would be uh, unhandcuffed for any hearing we have moving forward. Instead of her position in the box, we would probably have her seated at counsel's table, unless I hear an objection from the state as to that. We'll address motions first. State, any position with regard to being unshackled and be being seated at counsel's table for any motions moving forward. Uh, no, we, we defer to the court and the uh, sheriff's office who is in charge of security. Our concerns are just making sure that she's given a fair trial and fashioning a remedy that is a fair uh, presentation for the jury to observe. Okay, perfect, thank you. All right, so ma'am, the court's gonna grant your motion and then you will be unhandcuffed for every hearing moving forward. And instead of being in the jury box, you'll be seated at counsel's table. Okay, you may still have your leg restraints on, but you'll be hands-free. For the purposes of trial, in accordance with the Florida Supreme Court decision in Weaver, um, uh, you will be hands-free and you will not be shackled with legs. But the um, stun cuff, as identified by Sergeant Barnett, will be affixed to you and you'll have to sign that waiver. Do you have any questions for me? Um, for sitting here in the council's table, um, you also said that I would be shackled. Um, I'm not shackled now. Will I be shackled then? Uh, my understanding is that you were. If you're not, and the only thing you have is your handcuffs. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. If that's the case, then you'll be seated at counsel's table with that, as you are without your hand restraints. Okay, so I would be unbound. Correct. Yes, thank you. All right. Um, Thank you. 
The other item I have on and yes, sir. I think the sheriff's office is looking for clarification, and I think I am too. Okay, I think the situation is, is because she has handcuffs on now, she doesn't have leg restraints, but for hearings, when her hands are unrestrained, her legs would be restrained. Okay, I'm getting a thumbs up from the, the deputy in the back that that's the case. Is that the standard operating procedure is deputy loaded? Okay, so ma'am, so I'll clarify my order. For the purposes of any hearings, you'll be hands-free, but you will have leg restraints. Yes. That's not going to affect any fairness or impartiality because it's just you and me and the state, and no jurors will see that. Yes, sir. Judge, if she's being transported from the jail, she is going to be fully handcuffed with belly chains and all that. You can take those off. Um, in advance. Yes. Up here. Yeah, I agree. I understand that. Okay. I'm just worried about the fairness here in the courtroom, especially when we bring in uh, a jury panel. Okay. And for the purposes of trial, ma'am, you'll have no leg restraints, no hand restraints, your hands free, legs free, but you will have the stun cuff affixed to your leg. As identified by Sergeant Barnett, you're going to have to sign that waiver every day, okay? Of course. And if I may, if anyone knows, the stun cup, does it go over clothing or does it have to It is under your clothing as Sergeant Barnett identified. I have a representative from the public defender's office who I've asked to be here. She's going to have a conversation with you, ma'am, after our hearing so she can facilitate clothing for you, uh, including pants that would prohibit the jury from viewing that device on your legs. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, does that clarify for you, State? Yes, I, I, I just saw them and I thought that I saw the confusion based on my experience of how it's done. Okay. We, we cleared it up. Thank you. Now, ma'am, that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to wander wherever you want in the courtroom. There's going to be spots where you're going to be able to go to. You're not going to be able to walk all the way up to witnesses. You're not going to be able to walk everywhere that you want. There's going to be places that you're going to have to go to. When we get closer to trial, we'll address the box, for lack of a better word, for where you'd be able to go and not go, and I'm going to give the same limitations to the state, okay? I understand. All right. Are you okay with addressing that later, counselor? Yeah, I mean, what I would envision is if she needs an exhibit brought to witness, I have no problem getting up and doing that. I was going to, either you could do it or I was going to have the deputies do it. So, uh, ma'am, I envision that because you're going to be able to move about uh, freely, and our jurors are not going to know that you have any restraints on you, and they're not going to be able to see the stun cuff. You can conduct any questions or statements or arguments from where you would like to be in the courtroom, either at counsel's table or at the podium here uh, for you. If you need to approach a witness or you need to provide evidence to someone, I'm going to ask you and the state to both provide that information or that document to one of the deputies, and they'll be able to approach the witness for you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do you have any questions about the court's ruling or the procedures for you having um, movement throughout the courtroom during the course of our trial? No, I understand. And you said that it would be clarified greater once we get closer to that date. But I would like to ask, please, um, when the time does come for any exhibits or anything to be handed to jurors, um, yourself or anyone in the courtroom, is it an option for the state or a deputy or is it uh, specifically whoever's the closest and, and can do it faster? So what I'm going to do, ma'am, is I have spoken with uh, uh, the sheriff's office. I'm going to endeavor to have additional security in the office or in the uh, courtroom so that there will be a, a deputy for basically your disposal be seated closer to you. So that if you have a document you want to bring to a witness's attention or ask them questions about it, you can hand it to that uh, dedicated deputy for you, ma'am. Yes, that is my preference, please. Thank okay. you. That's what I'm endeavoring to try to do for you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Any other questions about the ruling? No, sir. Okay, so your motion is granted for the reasons stated on the record. Thank you. Uh, state anything to clarify? No, you're not. Okay. All right, the last issue that I had on my list this morning was uh, the scheduling order and notice of hearings that the court entered on August 5 uh, required the jail to provide the um, Every Monday at 9 a.m., commencing August 12, 2024, a representative from the Orange County Jail sent so email to my judicial assistant. Email provided in the order. All notebook entries from IMS from the prior week, Monday through Sunday, for every issuance of the laptop and USB device uh, is issued to the defendant. I'm simply changing that to close of business from 9 a.m. to close of business at 5 p.m. And that order will be hand delivered to Ms. Boone and he filed to the state tonight. Okay. Um, Is there anything else state that we need to address? 
No, Your Honor. Okay. Ma'am, is there anything else that you'd like to bring to my attention? Yes, please. Yes, ma'am. Um, in regards to the status report, you were just speaking about regarding them re uh, providing me with the laptop each day. What is your definition of entries? The protocol, ma'am, that was read to you that you were given a hard copy of uh, Monday and was also mailed to you on, I believe, the 30th um, at the appropriate PO box for legal mail. The Protocol identifies entries that are in the information management system at the jail for when the Al laptop is released to you and then returned. Okay, so it's simply just an entry by the officer stating that they gave it to me and it was returned. I, I'm making that assumption. I'm just relying on what is in the protocol. Okay, well, my concern was they're not uh, stating what it was that I looked at for how long and any, I don't know anything. That they're going to record that information on the protocol, ma'am. It's okay. just simply when it's checked out and returned under the protocol. Yes, thank you for that clarification. And then also for the notice of the um, expected evidence and witnesses at the trial, um, we didn't discuss the physical evidence. And I know that that was something pending in regards to the media being. The, the physical evidence, we're set to review that here in court on September 3rd at 9 o'clock in the morning. And that was identified in the order from the 5th, now, which you said that you got a copy of through the mail. Uh, that's in paragraph five. The state's physical evidence will be reviewed with the state and the defendant on September 3, 2024 at 9 a.m. in courtroom 12A, Orange County Courthouse, and the address of the courthouse. So the physical evidence will be uh, reviewed at that point in time. Yes, Your Honor, I understand. My question, though, was, um, are you still uh, trying to decide or research having the media? The media yes, ma'am. I pulled the case law on it. I need to review that case law to see if an evidentiary hearing is required. Um, um, I know that we have a hearing that we had set for August 14th, which was to address um, a couple of other issues, specifically your motion to receive the hard copy documents. We no longer need that hearing on August 14th at 1.30 because the jail has confirmed that they have space and Mr. Lane's taking care of that today. Um, but I do want to utilize that hearing for, um, I still want to utilize that hearing since we've carved it out. So at that hearing, we can address the media issue uh, based on the court's review of the case law and determine if we have to have an evidentiary hearing, we can have an evidentiary hearing at that time. And also we can utilize that as a status as to your review, ma'am, of the digital evidence and to confirm that you've had the opportunity to review it. Um, you don't have to finalize it, but just to see where you are in, in reviewing that digital evidence that the state may be seeking to introduce at trial. This is for the 14th? That's correct, ma'am. And what is the time, please? 1.30 in the afternoon. Okay, and for the case law that you are researching and referencing, are we able to have a copy of it prior? Um, sure. I don't, I don't see any problem. It's the Miami Herald decision. I don't know the citation off the top of my head, but I don't have a problem. I have no problem. Um, I'm familiar with the case. Sure. Uh, ma'am, what I'll do is I'm going to prepare another board. Um, uh, I'll be able to hand deliver you the one today, changing the Orange County Jail, providing the notebook entries from 9 a.m. to close of business. I can hand deliver that to you today. But in the uh, order that I mailed to you, ma'am, it'll provide the case law with regard to the uh, your privacy and media concerns. Yes, thank and that will be heard on August 14th at 1.30, in addition to a status on the digital. Now, ma'am, based on the scheduling order that the court entered back on August 5, you have 14 days from today, absent of showing a good cause to extend any deadlines to provide your objections in writing to that evidence. Forgive me. It's Objections for the evidence the from the evidence. state. The digital evidence only. Of the two USB drives from Mr. Lane? Oh, no, ma'am. The USB drive that Mr. Lane's going to be providing to the jail today that has those nine items oh, yes. identified in this notice of expected evidence that you were provided today. 14 days, and I have to write objections? That is correct. So your objections to the digital discovery will be due no later than August 23rd. And I will put this all in our order for you as well. Thank you. I believe that addresses 
all of the courts matters that were teed up for today. State, do you have anything else? No, no. Ma'am, is there anything else? I do have this. I made a copy of it for you that I supplied to Captain G D. Giovanni um, upon her return. Knowing what I am requesting, I don't know if I'm able to, to, to tell you, but it is a basic laptop. I have no internet and I have no phone. I have, uh, I'm trying to utilize the classroom that is in our dorm. I'm trying to uh, have access to a phone. The USB drives, um, how they're being handled, I feel very uncomfortable with, as I referenced to you prior. Uh, they're being taken out of the bags and then paperwork is being removed from those bags, like the protocol security paperwork that I needed to reference. And then they're resealing the bags. Um, the other day, one of the officers took the USB drives upon herself to remove from the bags herself and then just handed me both the USB drives. I don't know where they go. I don't know who controls them. I don't know how they're stored. And one of my requests was to keep it at my bunk in my locked uh, drawer, um, along with, uh, of course, the Internet. If I could be supplied earphones and headphones for listening and uh, a word program just simply to be able to type motions and letters and um, anything that needs to be documented or recorded. It is simply a basic laptop in order for me to view my USB drives. And just uh, as I stated earlier to you, some of the uh, parts of the USB drives cannot be viewed, which I will discuss with Mr. Lane tomorrow when I visit with him. Ma'am, well, you can give your letter to the deputy. We will file that in the court file. Part of the reason we just set the August 14th hearing on your motion for the hard copy discovery was that Captain um, D. Giovanni was returning on August the 12th from a vacation, and we were endeavoring to have a representative from the jail or herself be here for that hearing. So in addition to a status as to your review of the digital evidence a hearing on the media request um, or prevent media from being at the September 3rd discovery viewing hearing uh, will address your concerns as identified in this letter um, and have a representative from the uh, JLB, the Captain D. Giovanni or someone else um, here to address those concerns. Thank you. And if I may say one last thing, please, in regards to the media uh, being a, a part of my discovery um, hearing, I am highly opposed to it. Um, what are you highly opposed to? That is, I know that I have a lot of my case details that are already online. Uh, for me to be recorded inspecting and testing and photographing, I believe that is my business only and one, one Bit of <laughs> privacy that I should be able to maintain, especially being in the courtroom doing so. Uh, you're talking about the September 3rd evidence, unit, right? For the media? Correct. Correct. Okay. Again, ma'am, we're going to have that hearing on the 14th. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other questions, ma'am? No. Okay. I will see you all on August 14th at 1.30. Oh, thank you. Um, ma'am, as... Um, the attorney from the Justice Administration Commission had identified, he has provided the court via email, the pro se packet. Um, I have a hard copy for you, and I'm gonna have Ms. Berrios also send you a copy by way of the mail. It was already mailed. Okay, we're gonna mail you a copy as well, ma'am. Today, I'm gonna give this to the deputy to provide to you. This is the pro se packet that the JAC attorney made reference to uh, on our hearing on August 5th. Yes, thank you. And then also the public defender's office, you said, would be meeting me downstairs? They're going to be meeting you momentarily. Be that right here or downstairs, I'm not sure. But they will be meeting you to discuss that. Okay, thank you, Ms. Clay. All right, any other questions, State? No, Your Honor. Any other questions, ma'am? No, Your Honor. All right, we'll see you on August 14th at 1.30. We'll return this boom to the Orange County Jail. Thank, thank you. you.